Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Huntington Ingalls Industries is the largest military shipbuilding company in the United States. and a major provider of marine engineering and manufacturing services. Newport News Shipbuilding is a division of HII and plays a crucial role in the company's operations. The company announced changes in the construction and delivery approach for the John F. Kennedy, the second nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in the Gerald R. Ford class. Additionally, two other Ford class aircraft carriers, the Enterprise and the Doris Miller, are currently under construction. Further strengthening the U.S. Navy's carrier fleet, The keel of an aircraft carrier is a fundamental structural component of the ship's hull. It serves as the backbone or spine of the vessel, running along the bottom of the hull from the bow to the stern. Providing longitudinal strength and stability to withstand the stresses and forces. The keel laying ceremony is a significant milestone in constructing a ship, including aircraft carriers. And welcome to the keel laying ceremony for the newest Ford class aircraft carrier, Enterprise CVN 80. It marks the official start of the ship's construction process. symbolizing the laying of the first structural component. The process of fabricating and constructing modules for aircraft carriers, like the Enterprise or the USS Bougainville, involves several key steps. And a highly skilled workforce. The ship's structural components are fabricated in various manufacturing shops using high-strength materials. These components include sections of the hull, bulkheads, frames, and other structural elements. Some notably large steel castings are manufactured at foundries. which are specialized facilities for producing massive, precision cast parts. These fabricated components are brought together and integrated into modules. Rigging operations start with thorough planning and coordination. Its equipment includes various tools and machinery, such as cranes, hoists, slings, cables, and hooks. The riggers operate these tools with precision to ensure the load is lifted smoothly and safely. Once the load is lifted, it is carefully transported to its destination within the shipyard. This can involve the use of specialized transporters like the ones used for the CVN-80. Engineers and naval architects work on creating detailed plans for the ship's structure, including the foundation. This design process takes into account the ship's size, weight, intended use, and specific requirements.
For the foundation process, keel blocks are used to help distribute the weight of the ship evenly and provide stability while the ship's structure is being built. Keel blocks are carefully positioned to ensure the ship is level and properly aligned. Superlifts involve hoisting and positioning entire sections or modules of the ship's structure, such as massive hull sections. Large equipment or components like the flight deck. These sections can be too large or heavy to be assembled conventionally. Newport News Shipbuilding Foundry is a large, specialized facility covering approximately 200,000 square feet. The foundry has the capability to cast a wide range of metals, including high yield and carbon steel. The selection depends on the specific requirements of the rudder. The rudder casting process involves creating a mold in the desired shape of the rudder. The chosen metal is melted at extremely high temperatures, nearing 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The molten metal is then carefully poured into the prepared mold. During this phase, the metal takes on the shape of the rudder. The cooling rate and process control are critical to ensure the desired material properties and structural integrity. After solidification, the rudder casting is subjected to a quenching process. Rapidly cooling the casting by immersing it in water in order to increase the material's toughness making it more resistant to cracking and other forms of mechanical stress. The rudder, which is typically manufactured separately, is transported to the dry dock and carefully positioned adjacent to the ship's stern. The rudder is often attached to lifting equipment or cranes to facilitate its precise placement. Shipyard workers and riggers work in close coordination to align the rudder with the ship's hull. This is critical to ensure the rudder is positioned correctly and will function as intended. The rudder's pintle and gudgeon assembly allows it to pivot and is aligned with the corresponding parts on the ship's stern. Design changes during the construction of complex naval vessels like aircraft carriers are not uncommon. And engineers play a critical role in overcoming these challenges. Updates in technology, variations in requirements, or lessons learned from previous vessels are some of the reasons to apply these changes. Engineers and technical experts assess the proposed modifications and evaluate their impact on the overall design. development of new solutions and installation processes to accommodate the design change is implemented, ending with the prototyping and testing of such ideas. The Refueling and Complex Overhaul, or RCOH, process is a major maintenance and modernization effort 
performed on nuclear-powered aircraft carriers in the United States Navy. It is a comprehensive and lengthy process designed to extend the service life of these vessels and enhance their operational capabilities. The nuclear reactors on aircraft carriers have a limited fuel life, typically about 25 years. During an RCOH, the old nuclear fuel is removed and new fuel is loaded into the reactors. This process can take several months and requires a highly trained and skilled team. Preparing at dry docks for incoming repair ships, such as the USS John C. Stennis, For refueling and complex overhaul involves meticulous planning, inspections, and the use of advanced technology to ensure that the vessel receives the necessary maintenance and upgrades. Before a ship arrives, thorough inspections of the water communication pipelines are conducted to identify any leaks, blockages, or issues that could impact the docking process. Advanced scanning technologies, such as handheld laser scanners, are used to map and document various components, structures, and systems on the ship. The scanning process creates highly accurate 3D models of the ship, which aids in planning and preparing for maintenance and repair work. A sponson unit in shipbuilding is an external structure attached to a vessel's hull. Sponson units are strategically designed and placed on a ship's hull during the design phase to fulfill specific functions without compromising the vessel's performance or hydrodynamics. After pre-installation planning and mast fabrication, a crane or rigging system is set up for lifting and positioning the mast. It is securely attached to the ship's structure and electrical and systems integration are performed. Safety measures are observed throughout and thorough inspection and testing ensure proper functioning. Final adjustments are made, and documentation and certification confirm the mast's readiness for operational use. Crucial for navigation, communication, and ship operations. Sea trials, exemplified by those of the USS George Washington, are vital for naval vessels as they validate performance. ensure safety, test systems, and provide essential crew training. For aircraft carriers like the USS George Washington, these trials are particularly crucial due to their complexity, verifying their ability to conduct vital missions. The commitment to excellence in the design and maintenance of aircraft carriers ensures that these critical assets remain at the forefront of naval capabilities. Safeguarding national security interests and contributing to global stability.
That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.